Hey everybody, so we're over here getting ready to do this stamp concrete patio. We got the conveyor truck. That's the best access right there. We've got to reach this pad. It's about a 24 by 20 pad. We're going to stamp at me and Luke. It's actually at Luke's house. Luke put that pool in all by himself. He bought all that stuff, assembled it all by himself. He's building this deck. Now we're going to put him in a stamp concrete patio to go with it. We're going to use a special roller stamp we got today. It's kind of a Kind of a slate pattern you'll get to see that a little bit later in the video we basically just roll it over the surface to get it stamped it's, it should be really cool it's about noon time we did a pour early this morning and probably about an hour and a half from here and we left a couple guys on that to finish that me and luke just got back here so they they said they could get us a truck so we're going to get this done luke's had it set up here for a little while just waiting for a good day to get it done now's the day we're gonna try to, it's, it's a little bit of a distance, but the conveyor reaches about 40 feet. So we're gonna try to reach it, you know, get as close as we can with a conveyor. And if we gotta use that little chute, we'll use a little chute. Yeah, uh, I think he's just barely gonna reach time he gets that over and extends it. Take a look at it when you're ready. We've got some color in this today. It's called Land and Stone. So it kind of turns it, I don't know, kind of a tannish color. You see that? So it's going to be a little bit different than the regular concrete color. That was as close as we could get him without getting him up on his uh, leech bed here. So we're going to get it going. Uh, I'll hold the bag for a minute. I'll hold the, the rubber bag and we'll get it down there. Luke will get it pulled over there. Ready when you are, Matt. bit of pulling but hey what are you gonna do we couldn't get a pump the conveyor was the closest thing we could get to reaching this we'll get it you see the color of that it's a lot lighter a lot like almost beige or tan we want to get this in as quick as we can remember we're stamping it so it's about 85 degrees out right now we want to make sure we get it in quick so we have a little bit of time in between stamping and when we get done hole pulling now this roller stamp Luke and I are going to be using here in a few minutes is about 3 feet wide. It's about 12 inches in diameter. So it's got some size to it, it's got some weight to it, but the timing of it is really, really critical. Especially on a slab this size, this is a pretty big slab to do it on. And it's the first time we've had the opportunity to use this, so it's, it's Luke and I's first time using this thing too. So you're going to see how this is going to go and but first luke and i got to get this concrete in i mean it's 100 degrees out here so we got to get this stuff in fast it is hot out here feels like it's about 100 out here Mark, how come you didn't talk me out of this <laughs> <laughs> let's just get her done <laughs> what do you guys think of the color of that concrete that's land and stone like i said earlier we get our color from it's a local con it's a local company that sells concrete supplies and they sell the Butterfield Colors brand so we can just drive right down there and pick up they they have quite a stock of different colors um, I don't know Luke chose this color it's going to be you know the Asher stone we're going to use a black release so it's going to have a, a, a two tone effect to it so it's going to look pretty cool most of the time we do Ashler uh, we're using some type of gray charcoal in the color. So using a different color every once in a while is pretty cool to us too. <laughs> We've used this one a handful of times and it's a pretty neat looking color. Almost got to take a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Take much time to screed it, just got to get it there. I can't believe how hot it is already. It must be, feels like it's over 100. I ain't gonna have much time to wait before we stamp this.
going home after this, right, Matt? I do too. I hope you are too, but all right, we'll give that some time, let it cure up a little bit, and we'll get out the stamps. So as soon as we get them stamps out and get going, we'll be right back here. All right, so we're getting ready to stamp. It's, it's been about a half hour after the pour. We're going to use this roller stamp that we got right here from Marshalltown. It's an Ashler Slate roller stamp. So the key is just to get on it early enough so it'll leave the imprint in the concrete. That's what we're doing right here. It's a timing thing. So it's about 85 out here today. The sun's been coming in and out. When the sun comes out, it feels like 100. So we're going to try to get on it. It might be a little early, but better early than late when you're using a stamp like that. Can I uh, put in the liquid release to it? We, we tint the liquid release with, uh, with just regular powdered release. We put a little bit in these cans and mix it in. And that's how we get that colored liquid release. We want to make sure we get enough release on it so it doesn't stick to that roller. We're using that roller stamp today. You just want to roll it right here on the grass first. No, nah, I'd pick it up. I don't want to get crap all over it. Just don't want to get it on you either. Oh, it's all right. Mm-hmm. Here we go. I guess that's gonna be the hard huh? Keeping it straight on the board. <laughs> yeah. I say the timing's just right. Straight on it? Yeah, that looks good right there. Yeah. It's good. If anything, a little bit this way. If anything, towards. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. Looks good. Nice and straight now. Yep, looking good right there. Looking good. Looking good. Look at that impression. Doesn't that look good? Nice. I'd say that timing was perfect right there. No, you're good, yeah, you're good right there. Come back straight, yeah, perfect. Stay right there. Yeah, you got room? Okay. Yep. Right there? Yeah. All right, it's all on you. So remember in the beginning of the video I said this is our first time having the opportunity to use this stamp. So what we found was the trickiest thing about it was keeping it straight with the previous pass. Keeping that edge into the edge of the other one without it moving just a tiny bit, a quarter of an inch, half an inch, one way or the other. So Luke had to keep manipulating the handle part of it to keep it straight. It, you know. It wanted, if it wants to move just a little bit, then the, the edges of that roller doesn't line up with the previous edge. And you can get a little bit of a, either a wider edge in there or an overlap type of edge. So that's what he was battling as he was moving this. But all, all in all, it went really, really good. It, was, it wasn't too bad to use. The other learning curve on this is the timing of it. I mean, we, we had to get on this probably a little bit earlier than we normally would if we were going to stamp just using stamping mats because there's only so much weight to that. We do have some weight. You'll see we're going to add some weight to it at the end, but um, if you don't get on it early enough, it just doesn't leave the deep enough impression so you get all the really nice markings of the stamp itself. Looks good, Luke. I'm gonna jump up on the deck and see if I can spray that, okay? Uh, hello. Close it to the board, set it over. You ready? Yep. Looks good though. Oh, I don't like it. One thing to remember when you're stamping in this heat, remember it feels like it's about 100 degrees out right now. On a stamp, on a pad this size, this is about 24 by 21. When you start stamping, 
you can't stop. You might have 10 minutes to get from one end to the other, so you got to really get it stamped. But man, you get on it early, huh? You kind of have to, don't you? Well, yeah. Yeah, you good, Luke. So when we got to these last couple passes, we noticed yeah, the, the grooves weren't going in quite as deep, which means we should have either started earlier or gone faster. So we're going to add some weight to it and just put a little bit more uh, weight on it to help with the grooves. I don't know if you might want to re-roll over this. How you can take a look at it. Could put those weights on it. The best part, of dragging it backwards, is the best way to do it. Well, why don't we just do that? You can see the line. We can Morning. truck it around. Don't touch. Yeah, I'll fix this. Try to fix don't this. Don't It's all right. I just said floaties. You want to? But adding a little weight, adding a little weight to it because it's just a little bit firmer here than it was when we started. And we just want to make sure those lines, all those lines get pushed in deep enough so they show texture. Oh, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I guess you did, didn't you? But, I might have could have built it quicker. I just have to build it. Look at this. <laughs> it definitely is, goes down deeper on this side. It was hot, hotter over there. Yeah, right? that's where we started. He was a little dry. That first five or six wheelbarrows was dry. Alright, well that's it. Marshalltown Astro Slate Roller. So overall, for our first time using this, we was really happy with the results and how it came out. It leaves a pretty cool looking ashlar slate. These are a little bit smaller stones than what we're used to, but as far as rolling a, a pad like this, it makes stamping it really, really easy is what we thought. You know, this is a pretty good size stamp pad. So um, again, guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and we'll see you on the next one.